all of us know Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and other neurodegenerative diseases are diseases of aging because people now live longer. Life expectancy has increased in the past 100 years from 49 years old till 72 at the end of the 20th century. And this happens not only in developed countries, but also in China and in India. So Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, it's an epidemic. Our research is focused on deciphering the causes of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease at the molecular level, it means at the cell level, to understand what are the mechanisms that causes the disease. In general, neurodegenerative diseases share features that are common, for example, a state of oxidative stress rusting the brain, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, they differ, of course they differ, because they attack different sites in the brain. If we talk about Parkinson's disease, there is a special area which is affected, which is called the substantia nigra. But in Alzheimer's, the cortex is more affected. We don't know why these specific cells are damaged in one disease. If we could understand the process that initiate the disease, then we can have better strategies to attack them and to treat them. Rasagiling or Azilet were initiated in our laboratories it was a collaboration of Professor Udim and Professor Fimber, both from the pharmacology department, and then conducted long studies with Rasagiling. And then it was approved also by, by the FDA two years ago. It appears not only to treat the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, but also to stop or slow down the process of degeneration. It means that it can change the course of the disease. It's more commonly known as a drug that has a disease-modifying activity. Based on our previous results in, in laboratory studies, we are taking now the part of the molecule of rasagilin and put into another molecule and try to produce a new drug which can address several sites in the brain. So by having this new molecule, you can attack several brain targets at the same time with a single drug. So this will be the future in our laboratories for trying to develop new strategies for treating Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. So we think that uh, we might be in the right way. When I joined the center, I've been told by my boss, then Professor Yudim, who is the, the director of the center, that if you have a good antioxidant and a drug that can trap the excess of iron, because iron rusts the brains in, with aging, so you might have a candidate, a potential drug for treating Parkinson's disease. So just by, by chance, by accident, I stumbled into a paper that was dealing with the green tea, and I saw that it could be a very good antioxidant for treating Parkinson's disease. And then I went to the literature and I looked at all the research that has been done and I didn't see anything about brain diseases or trying to help or... The only thing that I found was research on cancer and inflammation. So I said, just a minute, in cancer you want to kill the cells. In Parkinson's you want to preserve the cells. So it's it doesn't go each one with that. And then I looked at the, concept, at the doses that they were using, and they, they were huge. And then I began to reduce the doses, and suddenly I saw that I can prevent the death of the neurons in Parkinsonian animals. And then we concentrated on which of the components of green tea are the best to rescue the cells, and we came to this EGCG, the main antioxidant, of green tea, we began to study the mechanism of action of these antioxidants, and we found that they differ. Each one has, a, has its own mechanism of action. And specifically for this EGCG, we know that once it enters the cell, and this is a very important thing, that it can penetrate the brain, because most do not. And then we wanted to know when it comes to the cells and penetrates the cells, what happened there. And what we saw is that 
it activates increases the levels of genes that are required for survival. Very important gene pathways that are required for survival and proteins. And uh, this was a major breakthrough, in my opinion. Most of the studies that are, have been done with several drugs are called preventive studies. It means that first you give the drug and then you cause the damage, okay? This is prevention, preventive. But when you come to the doctor, okay, you come already sick and then you receive medication. So we decided to cause the damage, to kill the cells, about 50% of the cells, like, like happened in Parkinson's disease, and then began to give green tea uh, polyphenol, EGCG. We saw that we can, after these cells were damaged, we can still rescue them. And this might have a very important implications for humans. So everybody should take the green tea, in my opinion, but not too much because you know what happened. If you take too much, you begin to kill the cells. Like in the case of cancer, that they use big amounts. So like you are not allowed to, to take too much vitamin C, which is an antioxidant, or too much vitamin E, because you know you, you get this kind of uh, bell-shaped curve that at low concentrations you get neuroprotection, and then after higher concentration, the cells begin to die. And this we have shown exactly how happened in the cells. So we have to work with low concentrations.